Vampires in the world of darkness have a dread of werewolves. Because of the rather savage prowess of werewolves in battle, at least compared to the average vampire. The most notable example of this animosity was the brief, brutal War of Chicago that opened with the destruction of the Succubus Club and ended with the downfall of Prince Loden. Given the strength of Lupines and their general unwillingness to be reasoned with or be manipulated by the kindred, the general policy of vampires, especially within the Camarilla, when it comes to werewolves is, don't touch the poop, don't play with the doggos, just run and hide. But some vampires are not content to just let the lupines roam about freely. Clans like the followers of Set and the Zabitzi have a long history of waging war against the werewolves, wars that the vampires have gotten the better of. Certain individual vampires, either out of necessity or a potentially deadly suicidal form of thrill-seeking, actually hunt werewolves, such as the adherents of the Path of Orion, or the Anubi of Milwaukee. So what is the secret? How does one push back against the lupine menace without getting absolutely wrecked? Here are some tactics that have worked for vampires in the killing of werewolves in the world of darkness. Silver. Let's start with the most obvious one, the silver bullet, or really rather, the silver anything. In the world of darkness, the argent bane of werewolves is very real and very dangerous to them, and one of the handful of materials that can overcome their notorious regenerative abilities when transformed. When werewolves are in their human or wolf shapes, they can be hurt or killed by any weapon that might otherwise kill a human or wolf. With that in mind, silver is over $20 an ounce at the time of this recording, so the potential hunter should budget accordingly. So how does one deliver the silver doom to the werewolf? Several options exist. The classic silver bullet. The man Uncle Red had gone to see was more than a gunsmith. He was, Uncle Red said, an old world craftsman, a sort of wizard of weapons. He confirmed the high grade silver content of my crucifix and Marty's medallion melted them down, and molded them into a silver bullet. Marty had read all the legends about werewolves. And though they differed on several minor points, they all agreed on one. Take silver to kill a werewolf. It should go without saying that a vampire either has to produce these themselves or entrust the order to an armorer who can be trusted to keep their mouths shut. A silver blade might save a werewolf hunter the trouble of having to dig a silver bullet out of a dead werewolf's corpse, both as a cost efficiency and to protect the masquerade. But knives and swords require the wielder to get up close and personal to a werewolf, which is a great way to live dangerously. A happy median between the bullet and the blade is the crossbow bolt or the silver arrowhead. And interestingly, werewolves have been known to use silver weapons against one another, known to them as claves. But before you think of taking one as a trophy and repurposing it, keep in mind that these are not just weapons but spiritual items to the werewolves, and they will go to extraordinary lengths to recover them. There are other, more mystical uses for silver, but we'll talk about those a little bit later. Fire. Fire is a double-edged sword for vampires against werewolves. Werewolves may not fall to ashes or plump up when you cook them, but fire is a source of injury that werewolves cannot easily recover or regenerate from. The problem is that most vampires have an actual, irrational terror of fire, and it burns them far worse than it does werewolves. But acclimation and willpower can suppress Rotschreck, or the Red Terror and there are certain esoteric skills that can give them resistance to fire. Still, flinging molotovs and bathtub napalm is tricky business, so handle both with surpassing care. The ideal strategy is to get the drop on the werewolves in question, box them in with fire, tighten it with yet more fire, and either burn the werewolf to death or finish them with superior firepower. Guns and Explosives and on the topic of firepower, as fun as it is to engage in glorious melee combat, many hunters will attest that big game is often best hunted from a safe distance. 
So when a vampire wants to go all Lon Horiuchi on some werewolves, a sufficiently big gun helps. When you can bring multiple big guns to the party, suddenly werewolves have a big problem. For vampires with appropriate government or criminal contacts, acquiring the necessary weapons and accessories is trivial. For those who can't get a minigun with a phone call, however, you'll need to set your sights on the civilian market. And so, on to the gun porn. You'll want something in a bolt-action rifle that chambers a nice big cartridge. But first up, we have the Remington Model 700, an American standard. All around are good for everything from varmints to bucks to criminals who simply need that extra hole right in the head. At a very svelte 41.5 inches and 9 pounds, an experienced shooter can set up and break down a shot quickly, get the drop on a werewolf, and get out of the area. The police and military variants sport heavier barrels, which increase the weight of the weapon, but also improve its accuracy and penetration. But let's say you want something with a little bit more punch, something that will put a werewolf down and keep it there. Then you step up your game to the Weatherby Mark V, the gold standard of the big game rifles. It's lightweight, accurate, and when chambering a Weatherby 460 cartridge will stop Cape buffaloes, rhinoceri, or African elephants dead in their tracks, with a special emphasis on dead. Again, available on the civilian market, so few red flags will pop up if a vampire needs to wrangle one. Upward and onward to the top shelf. The Barrett M82 is 48 inches and 30 pounds of bad day for anyone on the wrong end of it. It chambers a 50 cal cartridge and is designed to put holes through walls, along with anyone unlucky enough to be standing behind said walls. With an effective range of nearly 2,000 yards, a vampire can make a werewolf's head explode from pretty much a mile away. But let's say shooting from long range simply isn't in your wheelhouse. While other rifles may suit werewolf hunting, from the M16 to the AK-47, catching werewolves in a crossfire can pick apart all but the hardiest shapeshifters. The difficult part is in setting up said crossfire, which usually means someone is going to have to bait them into it. Or, how about ordnance? Werewolves are tough, but not tougher than a boom ball. As our esteemed California Anarch Nines Rodriguez demonstrated, even the most unreasonable werewolf can be persuaded to stop breathing with a well-placed fragmentation grenade. If you are a vampire who is partial to traps and ambushes, landmines or claymore mines will at least slow down the werewolf long enough for you to apply stronger methods to them, like a bullet to the brain pan. Chemical Asphyxiation One of the advantages that vampires have over werewolves is that being clinically dead, respiration is a triviality a process that they can mimic but don't actually need to engage in. Lupines, on the other hand, need to breathe like any other living creature, something that a vampire can use to their advantage. And as anybody who has survived Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu long enough will tell you, it doesn't matter how big and strong your opponent is if they can't breathe. Unfortunately, this method requires both significant preparation and plausible deniability as the use of chemical weapons will raise some red flags among people who don't need to know about vampires or werewolves. And as tempting as it might be for the vampire chemist to let their inner Walter White come out to play, dealing death with mustard gas, grenades, and ricin, again this leads to people with badges and guns asking uncomfortable questions. So rather than running for Schedule 1 of the Chemical Weapons Convention, a vampire may have to rely on less quick-acting agents like phosgene, sulfur mustard, chlorine or hydrogen chloride, industrial chemicals that can be manufactured or stolen as needed and preferably applied in an enclosed space which can be later burned down to destroy some of the evidence of how the werewolf was killed. It should go without saying that this suite of tools is not for amateurs or reckless fledglings and probably requires more effort to clean up the kill than to actually make it. Stooges Hunters occasionally use hounds to hunt wolves. Vampires occasionally have hounds of their own, typically of the two-legged variety, to harass, wear down, and occasionally kill their lupine targets. The number and skills of these <clears throat> werewolf hunters tends to vary wildly, from the hapless meat shield whose only job is to distract the werewolf long enough for the vampire to kill it, to those who have been trained and armed to make themselves an adequate threat to werewolves, 
to ghouled animals to the terrifying flesh-crafted monstrosities of the Zemitsi. Throwing patsies at a dangerous foe is a time-honored tactic of vampires, whether to screen their own escape or as a feint to conceal the true attack. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. The cruelest use of this tactic involves vampires seizing the human or wolf relations of lupines, known to them as kinfolk, breaking their will, and then sending them against the werewolves. Either the werewolves kill those they need to breed more of their kind, or they waste precious time trying to free them from the vampire's control, time which the vampire will use to dispatch the werewolf. Disciplines and Rituals the powers and abilities of vampires are nothing to scoff at, and even elder werewolves know better than to underestimate the undead. While werewolves can tear apart most vampires, certain vampiric disciplines and blood magic can be used to even the odds. For example, Celerity, or Vampire Super Speed, enables Kindred to match the terrifying speed of werewolves in their war forms. Of course, it is better used before the werewolves even think to shape change. Chimistry, the Ravno's discipline of creating illusions, or rather, manipulating the illusion mortals know as reality, is a nuisance to werewolves, but the power of the horrid reality cannot kill a shapeshifter outright, but it can assault their minds to the point of catatonia, at which point it's as simple as finding a big enough knife to cut through their furry necks. As with most things having to do with Malkavians, pointing them at something can either make the problem go away entirely, or make it worse than ever before. The effect of dementation is unpredictable, even to its users, but when dealing with werewolves it has its uses. Using powers like the voice of madness to drive werewolves into either a killing or fleeing frenzy is a dangerous gamble, but it reduces them to mere animals, deadly animals to be sure, but easier to kill, at least in theory. Dominate is generally not a discipline that lends itself well to the heat of battle as it usually requires both precision and time. However, the first and crudest use of dominate, command, a simple one-word order, usually stop, can be the difference between unlife and final death against an onrushing lupine. Of fortitude, little needs to be said. Additional protection against supernatural attacks should always be a consideration. The unholy power of obtenebration is well suited to ambushing unsuspecting werewolves, if the Lasombra using it is sufficiently skilled. A Lasombra who has laid the groundwork with enough darkness and mastered the arms of the abyss can disable a werewolf's limbs with strong tentacles of shadows. And I think we know what happens when you get captured by the tentacles. Presence may be the lesser cousin of Dominate, but the Bruja and Toreador have the ability to hold a werewolf at bay at least long enough to kill it. Entrancement can twist a werewolf's emotions to those of grudging obedience long enough for the vampire to deliver the coup de grace, and majesty can crush their will as brutally as it can on mortals. The Gangrel know that the wisest way of dealing with werewolves is to avoid them completely, but when called upon to fight, their protean discipline can grant them feral claws, which can rend lupine flesh faster than they can regenerate it. As befits their role as assassins, the Asimite discipline of Quietus allows them to turn their blood into potent poison they can bypass even supernatural resilience when introduced to their victims' bodies, usually by way of a coated knife or sword. The scorpion's touch power allows them to drain stamina. A weapon covered in Vita tainted by Ball's caress destroys the flesh of anything it touches with supernatural speed. A taste of death allows an Asimite to spit this deadly venom at their target. These poisons are surprisingly potent against werewolves, on the rare occasion the Asimites have had to hunt them but it is unsurprising given their vulnerability to the poisons of creatures the werewolves claim are servants of the worm. The Setites have a long history of battling werewolves in Egypt. To aid them in their clashes, the Setites, as part of their serpents' discipline, have an ability called the Skin of the Adder, which increases the toughness of the vampire, not to the level of fortitude, of course, against incoming attacks, including the claws and fangs of werewolves. The other clan, with a long history of conflict with werewolves, Clan Zemitsi, has developed its vicissitude discipline to somewhat level the playing field. The power of the horrid form grants a vampire enhanced physical attributes nearly on par with the werewolf's combat form, if only lacking the regenerative powers and rage of the lupines. 
Thaumaturgy, or blood sorcery, is one of the most versatile forms of power in existence, and one of the most useful in dealing with lupines. Among the better known paths of Thaumaturgy, the Path of Bloods, Theft of Vita, and Cauldron of Blood can make life very difficult and very brief for lupines. Movement of the mind can suspend werewolves in midair or hold back their attacks, though holding a 400 plus pound werewolf at bay is a feat only for skilled thaumaturges. Nearly the entire suite of abilities contained within the Path of the Hands of Destruction are as dangerous to werewolves as they are to mortals and vampires. A lesser known but highly effective ritual is the Ward vs. Lupines, which, like the Ward vs. Ghouls, is a slow cooker ritual. Prep it for 10 minutes, let it set for 10 hours, and you have an object that will hurt werewolves. And it may be placed on specific objects, weapons, crossbow bolts, arrowheads, and even small caliber rounds that are less likely to deform on impact. Another ritual, created by the Tremere Regent Nikolai in the aftermath of the War of Chicago, was the Unseen Change. The Tremere could prepare an area with werewolf's blood poured from a silver jug. From then on, any werewolf entering the area could be trapped in their lupus or wolf form. A further refinement of the Unseen Change is the Stone of the True Form, a cross between a ritual and an artifact. It enchants a marble-sized stone that can briefly force a transformed being to return to their natural shape. A few lupines have been drained or torn to pieces after being touched and forced back into the Hamid or Lupus form. However, for those known as Metis werewolves, this ritual is ineffective. But another artifact which is very effective is the notorious Argent Baton. This two-foot stick of silver only works so long as it is night and there is moonlight in the sky. It can effectively be used to either beat a werewolf into submission or death, or fire an anti-werewolf laser beam at them from up to 100 yards away. In case you are wondering how the Tremere managed to keep Vienna free of werewolves for so long, these are just a few examples as to how. And so the Sabat fans don't feel left out, they also have a few abilities in their thaumaturgic repertoires that can be used against lupines. The ritual of paper flesh can strip a werewolf of their prodigious endurance and stamina while in their war forms. The quickest and deadliest tool in the arsenal of the Sabbat is the Chill of the Wind Saber, which creates a telekinetic sheet of force powerful enough to separate the head of anything from its neck. But another ritual, the Shadow of the Wolf, is the one that causes werewolves who are aware of it the most concern, as it allows the vampire to essentially become a lupine for one night, with all of the advantages and limitations that entails. An artifact, of which there is presumed to be only one, the Ivory Bow, has passed through the hands of several Sabbat vampires. This mystical weapon of ash and ivory empowers any arrow loosed from it with supernatural energy to grievously wound werewolves. Elders Sometimes, you just need to call an adult to deal with a problem. and werewolves can overpower most vampires, but the conversation gets tricky with respect to old vampires, especially those of the seventh generation or lower. To start, these vampires have far more potent blood, which they can expend more efficiently than their weaker kin, neutralizing most of the immediate physical advantages that werewolves' war forms hold over vampires. Then you get into those elder vampires' access to higher and stranger uses of vampire disciplines, and suddenly, werewolves go from predators to prey. Some noteworthy examples of those ancient werewolf killers include Odin the All High of Clan Gangrel, Baba Yaga of Clan Nosferatu, Magda of the Lianan Bloodline, Vladimir Rustovic of Clan Zemitsi, Tali of Clan La Sombra, and Mithras of Clan Ventru. And those were some of the ways that vampires kill werewolves. Those who were introduced to vampire by way of bloodlines got their introduction to werewolves as nearly unstoppable murder machines 
who honored Gaia by chasing vampires through a fiery park instead of, uh, you know, putting the fire out. Or, if you played Redemption, there was just a werewolf chilling out in East London near the tower, waiting to murder your ass. Why was it there? Why was it so pissed off at Kristoff? Who knows? But if you sold or stored that Argent Baton because you didn't think you'd need it, well, you fucked up. Or you avoided the battle entirely by teleporting back to your haven. Vampires do have ways of getting their licks in. The two times I foolishly tried to run a game with werewolf and vampire players, one ended rather badly due to failure to squash the murder puppy's desire to murder any vampire NPC they didn't like the look of, or smelled of the worm. And they also pushed around the vampire players with threats of hulking out and killing them. Yeah, that didn't end well, especially after I killed their characters. Anyway, the second time I had more seasoned vampire players and more reasonable werewolf players but I did make shameless use of Argent Batons and Asimite Supremacy. What is Asimite Supremacy, you may be wondering? Well, vampires don't take too well to poisons and diseases of wormish origin. And vampires are creatures of the worm, as werewolves so often exist, so logically their poison blood has to be healed rather than regenerated. Good luck. Ultimately, these are just potential challenges and obstacles to be overcome by players and storytellers, which they can include or not include in a game. A major element of role-playing games is problem solving, and if you can solve a problem creatively while entertaining both the other players and the storyteller, then you are, at least in my opinion, a good role player. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Until next time.